Uh, hello everybody, good morning. Uh, today uh, we're gonna talk about the biaxial bending of beams. Uh, so far we, uh, we, are, we are talking about beam problems, but uh, in our discussion we considered only, only one uh, the, uh, the bending plan. What I mean, we considered only one axis of bending for our discussion. So today uh, we're gonna talk about what's gonna happen if you consider biaxial bending and beam problems. This is the third part of my lecture note six. Okay, here I showed you here I showed you three different beams: beam one and beam two and beam three. Okay, um, let's consider beam one. In the case of beam one, this is the this is exactly same as the problem that we 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 are discussing. So we have neutral axis in this direction, isn't it right? So this is a visualization of stress or strain distribution. Uh, because of the Kirchhoff assumption, uh, what I mean, the plan normal to the longitudinal axis of the beam it still remains normal after deformation. Uh, because of these characteristics, the strain and stress are linearly proportional to the distance measured from the neutral axis and beam section. So that's why we have these two triangles. Well, probably if you consider, uh, if you imagine that we have a positive internal bending moment, we have tension here, we have compression. And then the axis of uh, the moment, axis of internal moment is parallel to the neutral axis. This is what we discussed up to this point. Now uh, in second beam, so we are to consider another extremes. The here we have moment, moment in, in this direction, okay? So the moment is in, in this direction. In that case, this is exactly like, you know, the situation here, uh, we, we change the loading direction 90 degrees. So in that case, because of the change of the loading direction, the neutral axis should be vertical. So vertically aligned here. And then, uh, because of the Kirchhoff assumption, again, still the distribution of stress and strain uh, is, is linear. Uh, with respect to neutral axis, isn't it? Now we want to consider the third case. The third case is more realistic because we cannot guarantee the perfectly, you know, uh, perfectly aligned uh, the bending moment distribution uh, in 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 the vertical plan or the horizontal plan. Maybe in real situations we have many the mixed loading cases. Uh, for example, the vertical uh, what I mean, moment component in the vertical direction, moment component, the horizontal component, they are mixed. So of course, you know, uh, the one of them would be the would be governing bending moment. But uh, we cannot neglect the existence of uh, the uh, the other component. So in that case, if they are mixed, okay, if they are mixed, what I mean in each here, uh, this. Uh, this, the first bending moment and second bending moment, these two bending moments are mixed. And because the bending moments are mixed, then which means you know, the combination of these two bending moments should be inclined, you know, inclined uh, in, in, with in, in the global coordinate system. Uh, because of these characteristics, and we can imagine that our neutral axis should be inclined too. This is very natural, isn't it? So here we want to discuss the relation, the relation between uh, the direction of combined uh, bending moment and then the direction of neutral axis. If the two directions are same or if there is any difference, okay? This is the introduction of this subject uh, for the biaxial bending of beams. Okay, here, uh, let me, uh, uh, let, let me uh, introduce the problem here. So here we want to consider two different bending moment. Uh, as I told you, instead of uh, of talking about only one bending, only one moment loading, so we have two different moment components. But make sure that in this notation, the moment is not internal bending moment. Okay, it's not internal bending moment. It's not. So we are not talking about internal bending moments. This is the very important point to understand this argument. So in our textbook, uh, this is, make sure that this is external bending moment, okay? External moment loading, sorry about it. So we are talking about this problem. 
So basically, we have a cantilever. So we have a cantilever. So instead of talking about this short beam, so let's consider y and z and the x direction. So we have a long beam, okay? So we have a long beam here. And the, my loading is, uh, I have uh, the moment loading, so m, y in this direction. And then also, I have moment loading in z direction. Okay, this is the uh, this is what happened. All right, so let's check the sign convention for the bending moment. Uh, according to sign convention, bending moment if 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 a uh, bending moment uh, produce a positive curvature, we want to call this as a positive bending moment. Okay, let's say a positive uh, value of m z, and the, if you imagine the positive value of m z, that that introduce what that introduce uh, this kind of bending moment, isn't it right? So that produced positive bending moment. But in the case of MY, so if you consider MY, it's going to produce negative curvature in XZ plane. Okay? So that's why the sign convention for the external moment load is not the same as the sign convention for internal bending moment. So make sure that the discussion uh, given in this chapter, uh, here we, uh, we want to use external moment loading. Okay? So this this is not these moments are not internal bending moment. All right. So now let's talk about the uh, bending stress. Uh, according to our discussion, the normal stress was what? So if the bending moment is positive, it is given by m, and then y, and then uh, second moment of inertia. As I told you. This moment, where is it? Mz. Mz causes a positive bending moment. That's why here, uh, for Mz part, okay, the sign of external moment load is equal to uh, the sign of internal bending moment caused by the moment load Mz. That's why we use Mz directly. You know, make sure that here Mz is the external load, but you know, fortunately. In the case of mz, uh, the internal bending moment is the si same as mz. Or I'm, or I mean, I'm talking about this sign, and then the formula is the same. But in the case of my, the, it produces negative uh, internal moment. That's why we need to put the minus sign. So minus minus becomes positive. That's why we don't have sign here. You understand? Okay. If you want to consider just the internal bending moment, it should be minus and minus. But here we want to use the, the external bending moment in the place of internal bending moment because of the sign mismatch. Sign mismatch, it becomes positive. Okay. So here, this is the expression of uh, the normal stress. The what is the condition for the normal stress at the point of neutral axis? Make sure that because of the Kirchhoff assumption. The stress is proportional, uh, proportional to the distance measured from the neutral axis. So which means at the point of neutral axis, if the problem is beam problem, the normal stress should be equal to zero, isn't it? At that point of, uh, uh, at that point on the neutral axis. That's why on neutral axis, on neutral axis, on neutral axis, normal stress is equal to zero. Okay, let. Okay, at the point of neutral axis, it should be equal to zero. Then what happened? And then the physical meaning of this is distance measured from the neutral axis. And the distance also in, in Z direction measured from the neutral axis. Okay. So here, if you let this is equal to zero, the problem is it, it becomes M m y z i with respect to y axis is equal to m z y i z isn't it right so let's imagine that i have neutral axis so last time so if we have only m z my neutral axis direction of neutral axis like this it is parallel to the z axis isn't it but because we have mz and also my, 
And because of the combination of these two different external bending, uh, external moment loads, it is very natural to imagine that my neutral axis should be inclined too. So if you imagine the inclination of my neutral axis, maybe it would be inclined like this, isn't it right? It would be like this, okay? Then how do you measure this inclination angle? The inclination angle can be measured by uh, this tangent, isn't it right? It's tangent, okay. So at a point, at a point, if you imagine at a point, and then the inclination angle of neutral axis can be measured by tangent. The tangent, this tangent is can be measured by distance z and the distance on y. Okay, so tangent of inclination angle. Let's say this is beta. Tangent beta is equal to. It is by the definition is y divided by z. And then if you move here, and becomes y by z and the m, y, m, z, and then also I have i, z, and i, y, okay? This is how we can calculate the tangent, the inclination tangent of the neutral axis. So for example, if uh, m, y is equal to zero, if m, y is equal to zero, my tangent is equal to zero, which means my neutral axis is parallel to the z axis, isn't it right? That's how we, we, we can calculate the inclination of neutral axis. Okay, this is the result of our, of our calculation. I derived this equation just before. The inclination angle, inclination angle of my neutral axis is given by the first, the ratio of the ratio of the bending moment. And the second, the ratio of the second moment of inertia. We have two different parts, okay? And then here, I'd like to uh, simplify the ratio of uh, the bending moment uh, using a tangent theta. This is the you know, direction of combined bending moment. So if I have a combined bending moment, if I represent combined bending moment tangent theta, so let's imagine that if my tangent theta is, theta is very small, theta is very, which means I have mz, mz, but mz is much greater than my. So in that case, my theta is very small, okay, very small, so which means my tangent theta is also very small. So even if we have such small value, it is, you know, it is scaled by the ratio of second moment of inertia. So for example, in the case of this rectangular section, the ratio of the scale section, this ratio is equal to one, it, which means the, the inclination, the inclination of bending moment should be equal to the inclination of neutral axis. But let's imagine a structural section. In the case of structural section, for example, it look like this. Okay, let's imagine an I-shaped section. Then obviously, the bending moment with respect to Z direction, the I Z, second moment, uh, second moment of inertia in in with respect z direction is much greater than second moment with respect to y axis isn't it so in that case the ratio iz over iy should be a very big value so that's why you know the small change small change in the uh, in the moment loading is scaled by the ratio of second moment of inertia the, which means that influences direction of you know neutral axis okay so even if we we may have a small change in the moment direction small change in the moment direction with respect to geometry of the cross section but that would cause very big difference in the direction of neutral axis this is a very important consequence Okay, that's what I explain you. And then uh, let's consider an example here. So I have a cantilever. This is exactly the same situation uh, of the discussion that we made in our classroom here. So we have, although we consider a short beam, but I told you that this is a cantilever problem, okay? 
So in this cantilever, so now I have I-shaped cross-section. So here, I-shaped cross-section. The type of uh, the cross-section is given by S24 and 80. This is a type of uh, uh, the cross-section. So for the geometric information, so we have to see the table in the appendix. We have to check the appendix E for the dimensional properties. So we have a loading here. The P is 10 kilopounds. And then here the problem is we have to determine the maximum bending stress in the beam. Okay, so if the Y axis of cross section is vertical and therefore aligned with the loading. So this is very easy, isn't it? So first we have to calculate the bending moment. Uh, the moment at the point of support is what? The P times the length, isn't it right? The moment, moment is equal to uh, 12 feet times 12 feet. We have to change the inches and 12 inches. One feet become 12 inches. And the times 10 kilopounds. 10 kilopounds. 10 times 10 to the power of 3. This is the moment of loading. The pounds inches okay so once we have this and then we can calculate the, the maximum normal stress maximum normal stress is given by this bending moment value and the y distance we need the geometry and the second moment we don't show with respect to the z-axis okay to figure out y and i z so we need to look up the table okay let's look at the table uh oh where is it Okay, so here, uh, this is the cross section in, in, in this example. Uh, the cross section type is S24, and then S24 time S2480. So the second moment of inertia in one one direction is, is given by 2100. 2100, and then the height, where is the height? height, height, height. Uh, and then uh, height is not given. But instead of a height, and then the, the section modulus is given. The section modulus is 175, uh, 175. So let's use this value instead of second moment of inertia and y. Okay, so you know, i z divided by y is, e is equal to the section modulus 175. So m and the 175 okay then we can calculate the maximum normal stress very easily so because we are using the section modulus let's change the sign to plus one and the second problem is we have determined the maximum bending stress if the beam is inclined at a small angle or the alpha is one degrees okay so in that case we okay let's imagine that i have cross section cross section but it is inclined by one degrees okay so one degrees and then I have loading here P the because of this inclinations we can decompose loading into two different components this P here the P cosine of, of alpha and then I have what I have uh, P sine alpha P cosine alpha is equal to what? Almost equal to P. And the P sine alpha is P times alpha in radian. 1 uh, pi 180s. And then we multiply 1 degrees. Okay? This is a radian. Then we can calculate small bending moment. Here mz is what? It is the same as this value. M. And then how about my? So my value, my value is it is given by p times pi and 180 times one, and then distance 12 times 12. Then of course we have very small values in my. What I mean this ratio here the tangent theta should be very small one. Okay, very small. One. The problem is th this ratio, the ratio of second moment of inertia. Let's check the IY one in our table. If you check IY, so IY is given by 42 here. 
Okay, let's imagine the ratio. The ratio of second moment of inertia is 2100 divided by 42. It's almost what? It is almost, uh, almost 50. Okay, very big ratio, isn't it, right? Very big ratio. That's why my small change in the loading direction is scaled significantly to produce large inclination in the neutral axis. Is it clear? Okay, this is another kind of example here. So by the way, once we have uh, the position of the neutral axis, I can calculate the maximum normal stress very easily using this the formula, isn't it, right? And then this is another section, channel section. The nature of the problem is exactly the same as before. Uh, that's why I don't want to repeat the calculation procedure. Instead of that, I want to refer to this cross section in the table. Okay, the table, the, the information of this cross section is given in C10 and 15.3. So if you look up the table, so I already checked the table for you. So your table, this is channel section. This is channel section. Uh, it says that C10 and 15.3. Uh, so uh, one, two, three, four, fourth line from the bottom. C10 and 15.3. Okay, let's check the value of second moment of inertia uh, in the primary axis is equal to 67.3. And then uh, sub-axis is equal to 2.27. So the ratio of second moment of inertia is almost more than 30. You know, very big value, isn't it, right? So if we have small change in the, what I mean, small inclination in the moment plan, then that would produce huge change in the direction of neutral axis, okay? So in our practice, because the bending moment in the other direction is small compared to the bending moment in the primary direction, that we may neglect the contribution of uh, the small bending moment, but that would produce significant change in the calculation of normal stress. Please make sure this is a very important consequence. Okay? So, all right, so now let's talk about unsymmetric beam bending here. So this is one example here. This is uh, what I mean. The, the beam cross section is not perfectly symmetric here. So this is symmetric with respect to this direction, but this is not symmetric with respect to this direction, is it right? So in generally, for example, if you imagine, for example, let's consider C, C section, or if you imagine an angle section, this is not, not a symmetric section, isn't it, right? So I'm talking about this general consequence. Uh, in this general condition, so in usually in that case, uh, actually, you know, the exact derivation of what happened in this unsymmetric beam bending problems is out of scope of this lecture. That's why we don't want to, uh, we don't want to consider this, uh, the derivation of the theory. But if I explain you only the key point, so in the case of unsymmetric beam, so if you apply the arbitrary bending moment, that would produce twisting in, in the beam cross section, okay? And the neutral axis is not a parallel to the coordinate system, and the problem is very complicated, okay? This is the un what's happening in the unsymmetric beam bending problems. Here, let me take a 10 minutes break. <laughs>